the Naked DJs podcast. Are they really naked? We know they expose themselves every day just so they can bring you the best of music. They like to stick it out there for everyone to hear. You can hear their podcast on Anchor.fm, YouTube, and any of your favorite podcast platforms. Welcome to the Living the Dream podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. achieve, achieve. Welcome to Living the Dream with Curveball, a podcast where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, we're going to talk about how to achieve personal success in the smartest way. I am joined by Mindset and Empowerment Coach, author, award-winning speaker, as well as trauma coach, Letitia Bates. She worked in corporate America for 20 years before she started on this journey. So we're going to be talking to her about all the things that she's doing and how she's giving back to the community and helping people achieve success. Letitia, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute delight to talk to you. Well, why don't you start off by giving everybody a little bit of background about yourself? Yeah, so I have been interested in personal development work for over 25 years, but several years ago, I had a moment, I was about to have a milestone birthday, and it was two years before that birthday, and some of the earlier childhood traumas that I had experienced were still bothering me. So I had a nice house, and had a nice car, and I was a leader at my, you know, in my corporate world, and so on paper, everything looked great. But I found myself literally crying myself to sleep at night. Um, And I just didn't understand trauma. So I had a good friend of mine who every time I would talk to her about some of these earlier episodes in my life and how a lot of it was still painful to me, she would say to me, Letitia, that's trauma. And I would say, yeah. So we know if somebody's house burns down, we can all identify that as trauma. But some of the earlier things, whether it was abuse, Um, or whether it was bullying, those things really tore down my self-image. So I had learned how to achieve things, how to accomplish things, but I had not learned how to heal. So I started on this journey to help myself, you know, heal those wounds. And when I started realizing that there were actually things that people could do to help themselves heal, even from the older wounds, I just thought I have to do this. So the long and the short of it is I resigned from the corporate world and started coaching because I want to make sure that people have everything they need to get in life what they are wanting to get and that people are able to use their gifts, talents, and abilities to the best of their uh, ability. And when you have trauma in the background and you don't really understand what's driving the bus, it will slow you down. Well, tell us some ways that people can recognize that they actually have trauma that they need to deal with before moving forward in their lives. So the measure is not how old it is or how small somebody thinks it is. So let's just say, for example, something happened when you were 10 years old. And for whatever reason, there's a part of you that keeps going back to it. Right, and maybe you're 30 years old or 40 years old, and maybe you've tried to talk to people about it and they say stuff like, well, get over it, that was a long time ago. If it's still showing up in any way, shape, form or fashion, it is worthy of your time. And there's usually some kind of trauma associated with it. Now, again, it might not be the big trauma where the house burns down, but it's something that physiologically gets set up in your brain and in your body that produces a a stress response that still makes you feel sad, that still makes you feel angry, that still makes you feel abandoned. When those emotions have been around and they keep surfacing, that is your indicator that you might wanna check into that and work through that. Well, let's talk about grief. 
tell us okay. the stages of grief? So I look at grief in a different way. There are the stages of grief by Kubler-Ross. That's not how I look at it. <laughs> I approach it differently um, because grief affects people in different ways. I believe that the soul lives. I believe that the gifts that were given to us through those relationships, with, we can get past that trauma response, which is the sadness you know, the, the anger or the, you know, the devastation, or maybe it's abandonment too, right? Because if somebody left you, right? Because that's what happens when, when somebody passes away, there are all these elements. If you can shift out of the emotional charge of those sad emotions, you can then reclaim your connection to your loved one. And I'll tell you what I mean by this. My grandmother, was and is still my absolute favorite person, right, that I've ever met on the planet. And grandma died, it's 25 years ago now, but for 15 years, when I would, I had this little tiny Polaroid picture of my grandmother. And when I would see that Polaroid, I would visit it once a year. I would pick the Polaroid up and I would just burst into tears and just put it back in its place. It was just so much pain. This went on for over a decade, okay? Because I was associating grandmother with the loss, with the sadness, with the pain, with the absence of her, with no more family dinners and all of these things. These were the, these were the associations. When I started this work and I learned how to shift that emotional charge out of the sadness, out of the pain, Literally what started happening is my mind became flooded with all these wonderful experiences with grandma. I remember her calling me and saying she loved me every night. I remember her hugs. I remember her smell. It was a reclamation process. So now I walk in life in that relationship in a different way. Of course, she's not here, but I can still feel her loving presence as opposed to feeling the gap of her absence. Well, tell us about your at the wheel co coaching practice. Tell us what that does and how that helps people achieve success and get over trauma and grief. Yeah. So at the wheel coaching is funny because I was an insurance claims professional for 20 years. And what we did, you know, it was all about helping people get back at the wheel of their vehicles once they'd had an accident. And so for me, in my mind, I thought, you know, when people have had instances that feel like it stops them, this is about helping them get back at the wheel of their lives so that they sit powerfully in their driver's seat. And I do that through several tools. I'm a trained practitioner um, in EFT tapping, which is a really powerful tool to help process trauma and help reduce that stress response. I'm also trained in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, and I'm trained in hypnosis. And one of the reasons that I'm trained in these modalities is that they get to the subconscious mind. All this stuff, the limiting beliefs, the thing, thinking we can't do stuff, all that stuff is set up in the subconscious mind. So when you can reach into that part of a person's mind and shift that, you can change how they hold and view themselves. Once a person stops identifying as a victim because they have had some healing, then they start opening up and the possibility of who they can be starts to emerge. So that's how they you know, get that image and then start building who they need to be internally, that internal fortitude in order to launch a, that business that they wanna launch, you know, go on that trip that they've always wanted to go on, do whatever is in their heart to do, but for whatever reason, they believe that they couldn't do. But that starts with the identity shift. Talk about your book, 12 Keys to Achieve Personal Success in the Smartest Way. Tell us what made you decide to write it, what it's about, and how people can purchase it. Yeah, so the title of the book is I Can, and then it's 12 Keys to Achieve Personal Success in the Smartest Way. So the I Can is an acronym. And what you do, you go through the, each one of the, the 12 is, a, is an acronym, but the I can starts with identity. And that is the first place you start. Who do you think you are? 
Who have other people told you you are? And who do you want to be? Once you can figure out where I am now and where I think I want to go, maybe not have it all figured out, but you want to learn how you're identifying yourself. So an example of this is, you know, coming through abuse growing up for a long time, I considered myself a victim of abuse. At this stage, I consider myself a victor over a traumatic experience, right? I'm not identified with that in the same way. So by changing that identity and saying I have a traumatic past or I have a harm history in my past, that takes me out of the victim mode. So that makes me feel triumphant. And it's that energy of feeling triumphant that lays the path for what I wanna create next. So the first is identity in the I can. The C is for care. And it's learning how to take emotional control, responsibility, and appreciation for yourself. And what that is, I use an emotional inventory in the book. When you think of these things that may be a part of your harm history, how do you feel? And we are often taught, get over that. Um, that happened 20 years ago. You should be over it. But if you're not, you're not. <laughs> so I ask you to care about yourself in the book and take that emotional inventory and find out where you are. And then the A in I can is for attending. Now you have to have some mechanism of attending to those emotions. And that's when we talk a lot about tapping in that chapter. And then the N in I can is around noticing. So a lot of times when we're on the road, we stay focused on how much far we have to go and not honor how far we've come. So once that pain has been transmuted into something else, we can start focusing on what's good in our life, what we have to be thankful for, and really build that gratitude from a special place. And then the smartest way, that part is around goal setting and how to set the goals, reach the goals, measure the goals. Okay, can you tell us about any upcoming projects that you might have coming up that people need to know about? Yes, so I am at another milestone birthday. And so I am looking at what my impact looks like. So I am launching a women's empowerment group. Um, and I would love for people to, you can go to chatwithleticia.com. I'm looking for strong women who may have had some challenges these are professional women or entrepreneurs who are ready to do something big in their life. And maybe they've got confidence issues. Maybe they have belief issues. Maybe they have a harm history that hasn't been healed. And they're looking for support in that and a group of mission-minded women, professionals and entrepreneurs to support each other in moving ourselves forward. So if you think you are a fit, I invite you to go to chatwithleticia.com you can fill out the, um, you know, the application to work. And let's just take about 45 minutes. It's a free consultation. And let's just see if you're fit for the group. So you have chat with Letitia.com. Give out social media links where people can connect with you and follow you. Yep. So you can follow me at chat with, go to chat with Letitia.com for us to have that conversation. Um, on Twitter, it's ATW coaching for at the will coaching on Instagram. It's at the will coaching. And it's also at the will coaching on Facebook. So of course, my, my personal page is Letitia Bates. Um, but you can join my business page too, but I'm really looking to do something. I'm going to be 50 next year. And so I want to, I would love to help a hundred women through this program over this next year really lay the found, found foundation for a powerful future. I mean, you know, so much has changed. And I think a lot of people are in that reflection space where am I doing what I want to do, right? Because the world shut down last year and it kind of gave us a, a time to maybe process things in our minds in ways that we hadn't when we're just busy and in the hustle and bustle. So if that's a part of what's going on, you're trying to figure out how am I going to retool? What do I want to do next? you might be a great fit for the program. You have any final thoughts before we close it out? Yeah, so what I want people to know is 
some of the worst things that have happened to you have the ability to be your best moment, right? It's around turning the mess into the message. And when you have dealt with some of life's biggest blows, it can be helped, it can be healed, it can be transmuted. And so I invite everybody to live empowered and stay driven. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Chat with Letitia.com. Please be sure to follow, rate, review, and share after listening. And Android listeners, go to the Google Play Store and download the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast app. Letitia Bates, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Curveball. Such a pleasure to be here. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream. Dream.